Bumpers. 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 It's the bumper episode of This Is How We Robot. Hi, I'm Lily, and today I am walking you through on how we here at Cube Ranch build our bumpers. Remember, with This Is How We Robot, that you might find other useful tips and tricks out there with every FRC team making them in their own unique way. But we found this method works best for us. Before we begin, be sure to get your necessary supplies. We are going to need a 3 quarter inch thick plywood, which you can buy at a local lumber supply or big box store like Lowe's or Home Depot, some pool noodles, which you can buy online through Amazon, and some 1 inch wood screws that you can purchase at the same place you got your wood. You will also need some duct tape, but we assume you already have that lying around, as any robot team should. As far as tools are concerned, you will need something to cut wood like a table saw, a drill with a 1 8 inch bit, a screwdriver for the wood screws, a pair of scissors, maybe an iron, and a staple gun. First off, why bumpers? Bumpers are vital for robots during match play and FRC. These are what separates your robot's metal from directly contacting other robots' metal as well as displaying your team number and which alliance you are on, red or blue. Year after year, these bumpers are necessary component of each and every robot in FRC. But some requirements may change. What may change is the positioning of your bumpers on your robot. This is often what we refer to as the bumper zone. Bumpers are made with a 5 inch tall plywood, but must be located within a manual specified zone. For example, in 2022, this zone was between 0 and 7 inches off the playing surface. Some teams decided they want lower bumpers while others higher up. Those decisions are for your team to make on their own. These are also one of the few parts of your entire robot you may reuse year after year. Some teams, like our own, prefer to remake these each year as we see fit to the length of our robots. Others like to make corner bumpers to satisfy the requirements from the manual and reuse them. Keep in mind, the bumpers need to display your alliance color of red or blue for which some teams make reversible bumpers via Velcro straps. Others, like our own, make two sets of bumpers. In this video, we are going to satisfy the minimum requirements and making something with minimal materials. The corner bumper. Thanks, Lily, for setting that up. I'm Coach John Burnett, and I'll be taking over for describing the corner bumpers. So corner bumpers are great as they satisfy the following requirement from the manual. Bumpers are required to cover at least six inches from every corner of your robot. So if you make your drivetrain rectangular, then you only need to worry about the four. If you choose to make a circular drivetrain, you will need to cover the entire chassis as that is considered an infinite number of corners. Keeping things simple, you will need four of these corner bumpers in each color or make reversible fabric to pass inspection. The big drawback here is that much of the sides of your robot will be exposed. This means the traditional West Coast style drivetrain is not going to be allowed in your design and these bumpers can get caught on possible field elements which can result in bumper failure. This is critical as any failure to satisfy bumper rules during a match is grounds for instant disabling of your robot for the remainder of the match. So good sturdy bumper construction is vital to keeping you and your robot in the game. So let's get started. First, make sure your plywood is cut to five inch wide strips. Some of the commercial places where you buy lumber will cut these for you at a cost in case your equipment is not able to handle these large sheets. We are going to make corner bumpers which cover six inches of each corner of your robot and we're going to do a simple design of a 90 degree budding. This means that while one of these pieces of five inch plywood will be cut to six inches long, the other needs to be six inches plus the thickness of the wood. Like we mentioned earlier, you should have purchased three quarter inch thick plywood. So we need one piece to be six inches long and the other to be six and three quarter inches long. Now that we have our two pieces, let's go ahead and connect them together. We are going to use a small piece of sheet metal bent at 90 degrees to do the job. While we could just use wood screws to go directly into the wood of each piece, we find that doing so leads to splintered wood and weak structure at the corners. The manual allows for simple metal pieces to be used to adjoin the wood pieces together as well as fastening the fabric to the bumpers. 
But we will get to that part later on in the video. Here we drilled pilot holes, three on each side, to help get the screws into the wood and prevent splitting the plywood. Just a 1 8 inch drill bit will do the trick for these wood screws. Next, we need to cover the wood with pool noodles. The manual states that two 2 1⁄2 inch diameter pool noodles are to be stacked on top of each other around all of the wood. While we could cut these to butt up at a 90 degree or even a fancy 45 degree joint, we here in Q-Branch like to gently bend the pool noodle around the corner. We find that this gives a cleaner look in the end to the robot and we never want corners getting caught on other robots or field elements. To secure the pool noodles to the wood, we use duct tape. Because of some fabric choices, we like to use pool noodles and tape which match the color of the bumpers. Some fabrics tend to be thinner than others, so we do not want conflicting colors showing through. Be sure to hold the noodles tight to the wood and do smooth, clean wraps of the tape. After the noodles are secure, cut off the excess. We are almost there. Now let's add that fabric to the outside. Here we are going with blue fabric. There are many other teams with resources online to show you how to make reversible bumpers if you choose. And there are many fabrics to choose from, as the manual just says the material must be durable. So, tissue paper is out of the question, but Andy Mark sells a few options with slick textures for offense to prevent pinning, grippy texture for defense, but the standard go-to fabric is Kodura. Notice we do not yet have our team numbers on the fabric. We want to get the fabric cut and temporar temporarily affixed to the bumper so we can mark out where we want the numbers first before we commit to a placement. That means we are taping on fabric here and cutting the excess. Then we are marking the position of the team numbers using masking tape. We here at Q-Branch then take this fabric to a local sports clothing supplier who heat presses on our numbers. Many teams will choose to iron on their numbers and that is perfectly okay. We have found that this technique does not last long enough in rough FRC gameplay and we often ended up needing to make use of packing tape to hold on our numbers as the season progressed. So if you're lucky enough to find someone with a heat press to handle this for you, take advantage of that opportunity. A note on the numbers though. The rules require only that the numbers be four inches tall and a half inch stroke. Also, the numbers either need to be all white or outlined in white. The font choice is up to you and if you'd like to get fancy. Andy Mark and RoboPromo.com sell various styles of numbers for you to choose from. We like to either match our team's logo's font or match the year's theme. Now with the numbers on the fabric and everything cut to length, let's go ahead and more permanently affix the fabric to the wood. We like to use a staple gun to secure the fabric. The corners may need some cutting or folding to get a smooth look, but the extra effort is worth it. These bumpers are the first presentation of your robot to other people. Take pride in good work. Lastly, let's get these bumpers on your robot. The FRC game manual states that the bumpers must be rigid, a word whose definition can vary greatly from inspector to inspector, but a good jiggle test should show the bumpers will not fall off on first contact. We here in Q-Branch like to use snap-on brackets, seen here, which allow for quick change of our bumper sets between matches. This takes specific hardware and a little more machining than we are encouraging in this video, so let's just stick with the standard angle brackets you might find in a rookie kit or a package from Andymark. To get these in the right spot, we like to position the bumpers on the robot first and then mark on the wood where we would like to drill holes or line up the metal brackets. For the purposes of connecting these to your robot, we recommend the use of quarter 20 bolts and wing nuts. That should do the trick of rigidly putting these bumpers on your robot. And congratulations, you just made yourself a bumper ready for FRC gameplay. Keep in mind that bumpers come in many shapes and sizes, but what we showed here today satisfies the minimum needed for your robot. Note that we here at Q-Branch prefer to use bumpers which wrap all the way around the robot whenever possible to avoid snagging on corners. We have too much experience getting our robot disabled in a playoff matches where a corner caught a field element and then the bumpers were dragging on the floor or off our robot completely. So thanks for watching and being with us here today. Remember to leave a comment with your team name and number so we know what robots to cheer for this season. And as always, subscribe to this channel to keep finding out more on This Is How We Robot.